this royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. England only, but all this land lying in the ring of the sea, no longer only the castle in the water meadows, but now also the castle on the rock, in a city beautiful, adamant and grave, Edinburgh of the Scottish King. Scotland, of skirling mountains and lilting waters flowing in the dales of the clans. Here, built by a queen, Balmoral Castle waits for its queen again. West is Carnarvon, Castle of Wales. Wales, where music is mined from the deep ground, and Merlin prophesies and Arthur sleeps, and the sun melts at evening on the sand. This earth, this realm, Three lands, indivisible. A union of loyalty in the bounds of the sea, and yet unbounded, overleaping waves and distance to the Ulstermen and the Channel Islanders. And so, by ocean ways around the world, link by welded link the commonwealth of nations, the realms and territories of the Queen. points of her realm, her crowning is proclaimed. From St. James's Palace, the words are read. By the Queen, a proclamation, declaring Her Majesty's pleasure touching her royal coronation and the solemnity thereof, that all her realm shall know the Queen is to be crowned. She comes to us in the sorrow of her father's passing, our Sovereign Lord, King George VI who in a true and entire devotion lived through dangerous years in the lives of his people. And now in Scotland's capital the words are read, as by ancient usage and custom of this realm, Elizabeth Regina, whereas we have resolved by the favor and blessing of Almighty God to celebrate the solemnity of our royal coronation at Westminster upon Tuesday, the second day of June in the year of grace, 1953. The words echo out of the history of the land. 
A new day moves in strength over the ancestral pattern of ceremony. In the great cities and the towns of the country, the trumpets are sounded. The herald comes to Temple Bar at the bounds of the city, asking leave to enter. And speaking and answering, the silver trumpets blow. of Her Royal Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. Open the barrier. Gradual ceremony of daybreak touches the royal coat of arms on the gates of Buckingham Palace and finds a people and a world in waiting. A thousand voices welled into a welcome which no single thought can compass for Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. A welcome of love and deep memory and for Princess Margaret beside her. A welcome remembering also another Queen Mother, Queen Mary, whom the people loved. seventh wave, the cheering grows to its climax. Into the forecourt of the palace and through the gates comes the gilded coach, two centuries old, bearing the young queen to her crown. Eight Windsor greys in gold and crimson harness draw her.
wave of cheering travels with her, pouring along the mall as those would lift her and carry her on her way. into Trafalgar Square, the tumult of welcome and love surrounds her from the packed pavements and the windows and the roofs above her. The early summer queen, the Duke of Edinburgh beside her, rides friendly and quiet on this dazzling journey, daring by inheritance the simplicity which was her father's and her grandfather's also. The personal aides de camp to the Queen, His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester, and on his left, Admiral the Earl Mountbatten of Burma. Welcome of Bells, the Queen arrives at Westminster.
up in the Henry VII Chapel hang the banners of chivalry. The banners of the Knights Grand Cross of the Order of the Bath. Gold and crimson, green and gold and blue, and the figures of heraldry. The Golden Lion of England, the Red Lion of Scotland within the double treasure, Flory, Counter Flory. Black Eagle with wings outstretched upon an ermine field. A red rose barbed and seeded. The sun in his golden splendor. Under the fan vaulting of the roof. Five swords of state, three of which are carried in procession before the queen. The two swords of justice and the sword of mercy with the blunted point. And the window dedicated to the few. Those 63 squadrons which fought the Battle of Britain. Their badges all recorded here in the colors of the glass against the sky they defended. on the lectern are inscribed these words, attempt great things for God. In the knowledge of the mystery of human life, this day's ceremony is performed. Remembering that in each moment of time is the imprint of eternity. In this wisdom, in times precedent, the long line of kings and queens have been anointed here at Westminster, in the church built by Edward the Confessor, saint and king. And they have been crowned with St. Edward's crown, in which the gemmed and golden arches carry the golden globe and the cross with drops of pearl over the purple velvet cap of maintenance.
was glad when they said unto me, We will go. We will go into the house of the Lord. The Bible, pattern and chalice are brought by the bishops and placed upon the altar. First, the queen shall receive the recognition of all her people who in their loyalty surround her. goes to take a stand near by King Edward's chair. And there the Archbishop of Canterbury will present her for recognition. And the Queen will turn to her people, to the east and to the south, to the west and to the north. And each time the people cry out their willingness and joy to do her service. God save Queen Elizabeth. Sirs, I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? The Queen now compacts with her people and before them to govern according to the laws and customs of her realms. Madam, is your majesty willing to take the oath? I am willing. Will you solemnly promise and swear to govern the people of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon, and of your possession and the other territories to any of them belonging 
or pertaining according to their respective laws and customs. I solemnly promise so to do. Will you, to your power, cause law and justice in mercy <coughs> to be executed in all your judgments? I will. Will you, to the utmost of your power, <coughs> maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel? <coughs> Will you, to the utmost of your power, maintain in the United Kingdom the Protestant Reformed religion established by law? Will you maintain and preserve inviolable the settlement of the Church of England and the doctrine, worship, discipline, and government thereof as by law established in England? And will you preserve unto the bishops and clergy of England and to the churches there committed to their charge all such rights and privileges as by, as by law do or shall appertain to them or any of them? All this I promise to do. goes now to the altar to confirm before God the promises which he has made. The things which I have here before promised, I will perform and keep. The Queen kisses the Bible and subscribes the oath. The things which I have here before promised, I will perform and keep. So help me God. First time in the many times of this ancient ceremony, Scotland's church takes part. The moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland receives the Holy Bible from the Dean of Westminster and brings and presents it to the Queen. Our gracious Queen, to keep your Majesty ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes, we present you with this book, the most valuable thing which the world affords. Here is wisdom, this is the royal law, these are the lively oracles of God. to King Edward's chair, and four knights of the garter bring and hold over her a canopy of cloth of gold. It is the moment of the anointing, the hallowing, a moment so old, history can scarcely go deep enough to contain it. The hallowing, the sacring, the spirit cleansed, as in the east the body was anointed and made clean. Queen anointed, blessed, and 
consecrated. Then the queen is clothed in white and in cloth of gold with a golden girdle. And as poetry and music may speak great meanings and little sound, so now thoughts of virtue and history are lived in moments of short ceremony. state is changed for the jeweled sword and the queen receives the jeweled sword and takes it and offers it at the altar. Receive this kingly sword brought now from the altar of God and delivered to you by the hands of us the bishops and servants of God though unworthy. With this sword do justice, stop the growth of iniquity, protect the holy church of God Help and defend widows and orphans. the bracelets of sincerity and wisdom, both as tokens of the Lord's protection, embracing you on every side, and as symbols and pledges of the bond that unites you with your people, to the end that you may be strengthened in all your works and defended against all enemies, bodily and ghostly, through Jesus Christ our Lord. on the great golden mantle, the imperial robe. Receive this imperial robe, and the Lord your God endure you with knowledge and wisdom, with majesty and with power from on high. The Lord clothe you with the robe of righteousness and with the garments of salvation. receives the orb, the world under Christ's dominion, and the ring of sapphire and ruby. Receive this orb set under the cross, and remember that the whole world is subject to the power and empire of Christ our Redeemer. Receive the royal scepter, the ensign of kingly power and justice. Receive the rod 
of equity and mercy. Be so merciful that you be not too remiss, so execute justice that you forget not mercy, punish the wicked, protect and cherish the just, glory and righteousness, that having a right faith and manifold fruit of good works, you may obtain the crown of an everlasting kingdom by the gift of him whose kingdom endureth forever. Amen. Prince Charles, the Duke of Cornwall, has joined the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret and has taken part in the splendid moment of his mother's crowning. The trumpets are sounded and the bells are rung. A thunder of guns roars across Hyde Park, and far off, eastward by the river, the guns of the Tower of London answer. So have people in the city and town of London hear and know and salute this moment of crowning. And the Queen goes in procession to be enthroned. Be strong and of a good courage. Stand firm and hold fast from henceforth the seat and state of royal and imperial dignity which is this day delivered unto you in the name and by the authority of Almighty God. May wisdom and knowledge be the stability of your times and the fear of the Lord your treasure. Amen. And the Queen goes to the throne and is lifted up into it by lords spiritual and temporal, as in their hearts she is lifted above them into her state. She has entered and taken possession of her kingdom, and sits anointed, crowned, and enthroned. And now, in turn, the princes and peers come to do her homage. First, the lords spiritual, the Archbishop vowing to be faithful and true, and faith and truth to bear to the Queen and to her heir, in the name of God.
Prince Uncle, the Duke of Gloucester, pays his homage. offers up the bread and wine of the communion and makes her oblation of an altar cloth and a wedge of gold. The Duke takes her place and the Archbishop prays that God's blessing shall be upon him.
service is at an end. The Prime Ministers leave the Abbey. The Prime Ministers of Northern Ireland, of Southern Rhodesia, of Ceylon, of Pakistan, of India, of South Africa, of New Zealand, of Australia, and of Canada. And the Right Honourable Sir Winston Churchill, who has said of the Queen, the lady whom we respect because she is our Queen, and whom we love because she is herself. The Duke of Edinburgh leaves, followed by his page, Midshipman Rees, RN, and the members of His Royal Highness's suite.
When the Queen and her procession have left, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and after her, Princess Margaret, make their slow processional way to the West Door. Outside the abbey, the pageantry begins again. Here they come, the old cry which welcomes marching soldiers. And here they come, Her Majesty's colonial troops at the head of the great procession. The men of the Commonwealth nations marching behind them.
colonial ruler. the Queen of Tonga. The friendly island in the Pacific Ocean so dares the English summer that all the great crowd can see her smiling acknowledgement. Queen Mother and Princess Margaret comes Her Majesty's own procession. Musicians, chaplains, aides de camp, air ministry, war office, admiralty, the marshals and field marshals and admirals. Very near now to the Queen, marching as though out of the past into the present and on into the future, come the Yeoman of the Guard and the Queen's Barge Master and Twelve Watermen.
information flows without pause from throat to throat, by Whitehall to Pall Mall, along St. James's Street and Piccadilly, up through the Summer Park. and music of the bands are half lost in the welcome. At last, the procession turns again into the man, to where the Queen left for Westminster, six great hours ago.
rising like a rock or island out of a sea of waving and cheers, are those figures of symbol which surround Victoria's memorial. As truth, that deep center of integrity without which nothing can endure. And justice crowned with mercy. For each man is God's trust to every man. And here too, the labor and the fashioning, manufacture, the work of hands, and agriculture, man and earth together in their natural accord, patient in preparation for the harvest. And far-seeking progress, whose reality can only be to all men a fair life, and a growing vision of the needs of men and the meaning of mankind. Then the spirit of peace, the calm of goodwill, which waits to reign over men's maturity, and victory, which at last must be of good over evil. Victory here attended by courage and constancy. All these stand like a rock among the thousands who now acclaim their sovereign. Victoria's reign was long. Long live the queen. God save Queen Elizabeth. Long live Queen Elizabeth. May the Queen live forever.